Greetings from the Ho Elephant Institute. Today is July 20th, 2022. Uh, walking on the street. Now, this is not flushing. <laughs> As you can see, the neighborhood is very different. And uh, this is uh, Seattle, Washington University District. Everything is very green. Yeah, so heading out to the busy street uh, for the UW students, uh, University Avenue. Uh, just finished posting. Look at these uh, plants. Yeah, today finally settled into the office uh, had the tranquility of the mind to delve into the past the story regarding Dr. Tang Wen Wang and the reason why Dr. Tang Wen Wang had to leave the research center called the Benaroya Research Institute downtown Seattle. In this trip, we're gonna go visit the Benara Research Institute and uh, Dr. Tang Wang Wang was a principal investigator at uh, the research institute specializing in cancer immunology field research. And Dr. Tang Wang Wang was recruited by the director of BRI, Benaroya Research Institute, Dr. Jero Nippon, in the year of 1999 to come to this beautiful city, Seattle, to start to work on her research projects with a goal to find a cure of cancer. And uh, it was the same year. This is a beautiful street. Same year, the CCP government actually tried to lure Dr. Wang to China to be one of the 100 top overseas scientists uh, project that's basically CCP tried to use money and the power to lure the accomplished uh, Chinese scientists who are now American citizens take American tax dollars American people's tax dollars to do frontier research in all different areas and that they want to buy these researchers' hearts, conscience, with money and make them slaves of the CCP. And of course, Dr. Wang was not willing to be part of that, but she had a wrong thought. She thought maybe going back to China will be able to change this country through her great work. So she actually accepted that offer from the CCP government and was enlisted as the one of the member of the you know 100 talents program the notorious uh, thousand talent program now the world that you learn uh, is actually a follow-up expansion of the 100 talent program yeah and dr wang was one of the first uh few scientists enrolled into the 100 talent program in 1999 and dr wang was ready to take her beautiful family uh little noah 
the time was uh, only four years old and then her Jewish husband Alan Gentosio and she was ready to take the whole little family back to China and that was exactly the turning point uh, when actually she made the decision to return to China she experienced a sudden spiritual awakening experience in the middle of the night in November 1999 yeah so that turning point led her to learn this ancient practice called the Falun Dafa Falun Dafa cultivation way uh, consists of uh, very profound teachings uh, of true human life science about mind, body, and spirit, and also the practice method. Five sets of beautiful exercises. Four sets are standing exercises. Uh, fifth one is uh, sitting meditation exercise. But it's not just regular physical exercise, it has the inner contents that's um, way beyond and it's called a cultivation practice. Okay, now we are actually arriving at UW um, Avenue, University Avenue. Here we go. University Avenue Northeast. We're gonna head towards this direction and head over to H Mart to grab some stuff. But this is basically the UW University um, avenue for UW students to hang out, do shopping. It's just like uh, for Harvard University, you know, you have the Harvard Square in Cambridge. So for every university, when a university brings young talents together and start to train great minds and brings in positive energy field and attract a lot of people and business certainly start to bloom yeah so here we go oh we got also a target here Hi. and over there you see a chinese restaurant called the taste of xian I believe we have that in Flushing as well in New York on Main Street. Okay. So about Dr. Wang's story, yeah, 1999, Dr. Wang had a spiritual awakening experience and that led her to learn Falun Dafa practice. That led her to meet Dr. Lily Fan, who bravely initiated the first set of scientific investigations of the impact of Falun Dafa cultivation practice to the human immune system. And uh, at the time, I think she started the project when she was in Scripps, uh, San Diego. And then when her laboratory was relocated to Bay Bayer School of Medicine in Texas, Houston, she continued to expand that study but uh, she actually truly did a third party independent investigation because uh, in order to be, you know, not to have her energy field impacting the results, actually all the data were, all the materials were handled by a third party uh, assay laboratory. And uh, the data analysis was sent to Dr. Wang for analysis at the molecular level. Dr. Wang was also the one that did the manuscript pre preparation, written down the manuscript. Eventually she got that published. Uh, unfortunately, was against Dr. Wang's interest uh, or vision. Dr. Wang considered the data is so important and so groundbreaking and it's a paradigm shifting. So Dr. Wang wanted to be actually published in top-notch journal like Science and Nature. But uh, Dr. Lilifen, for, for some reason, got interfered 
in the year between 20, uh, 2003 to 2006 when she uh, passed away. Uh, during those years, I believe that there was an infiltration of a CCP spy into her laboratory and she was, uh, you know, given a lot of wrong information and uh, misled and ultimately leading her deciding to quit the project altogether. And uh, she wanted to just very quickly publish the data in a third level journal. Well, I can, cannot really categorize this, but um, in just like a regular scientific uh, researcher's eyes, you know, you have uh, first class, second class, third class journals. Um, but you know, the journal she got the paper published, as a matter of fact, uh, prevented the general public from learning about it, even prevented the mainstream scientists um, in the frontier life science field to even read about it. So it's pretty much. Uh, published and almost forgotten by people and most people didn't pay much attention to the incredible insights and the weight of that research article so at the whole elephant institute we got that paper uh, translated um, data presented uh, in the way that the general public can understand and translate it also fully into Chinese language. Yeah, so most likely um, in the very front, you know, in the, in the future, people will be talking about that a lot. Okay. So we are walking on the street and I hope I didn't pass H-Mart yet. Excuse me, do you know H Mart is more further down or I don't know where you don't is. know? Okay, no problem, thank you. Here is the university bookstore. That's really great. Oh, I think H Mart is upcoming next. Alrighty, so taking a walk. Here's the Bank of America um, booth. And, uh, relatively you know calm and the slow business before this street is very packed always very busy busy so yeah today we finished that story and posted the details about uh because of dr wang's choice to work on the project of furthering the discoveries of Dr. Li Fan, the preliminary data about the impact of uh, Falun Dafa cultivation way on human immune system. Uh, Dr. Tao Wang Wang's laboratory was ordered to sh be shut down in the year of 2004. And that was the beginning of uh, the project of the whole Elephant Institute and leading to today, the official opening of the Seattle office of the whole Elephant Institute and coming back to Washington State to connect with uh, former colleagues of Dr. Wong and friends, family, neighbors, community, Falun Dafa practitioners, and also a lot of new Chinese immigrants students in UW and they are super talents but they are also likely poisoned by the CCP hate propaganda about Falun Dafa and so we really need to work on all these projects and welcome uh, all good hearted people to come to stand by our side and to expand you know uh, the power of truth and let more people awaken to the truth. And uh, here we go, we have each month right here. Pause. Okay, here we go, each month. Maybe we're gonna also film a little bit. Yeah, this is uh, basically the first H Mart in Seattle that we visit. And this is where I always do shopping in 
fleshy. We're gonna try to grab something very basic like instant noodle, soup um, for the office operation. Um, let me focus on shopping now. Pause.